Radio, this is the final video in this brand new How to EGD series, Smacking Your Final Exams. We're looking at mechanical assembly. It is 50% of your paper too. It is a critical part of that paper and you need to spend time. And I'm going to show you a couple of pointers in this video that will definitely help you understand what is the requirements and how to absolutely nail this question. Of course, it's going to require you to draw, 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 and prepare yourself for your final exams. If you're watching this video the night before, I'm a little bit worried, all right? <laughs> Tell your friends they should have shared it to you earlier. Okay, here we are. We are looking at the question as it was asked two years ago. I did this with my learners in class the other day. When you get these drawings, understand what you are looking at. This is third angle orthographic. So each one of these drawings resembles one of these components on the right hand side. Okay, so we can take any one of them. Let's for instance take the sump here, number nine. Okay, we've got two views of the sump. You can actually go and you can just isolate it for yourselves if you need to so that you can clearly see what are you looking at. You're looking at two views. You've got a top view and a front view and the top view is only half drawn because it is symmetry okay and then you have your front view let's look at any other example the color plate here on top again exactly the same a front view and a top view again they've given you symmetry just next to it even this little screw here top view front view this spur gear top view front view and so they've already told you what's the orientation of this if you weren't sure what third angle of the graphic projection is okay then they've given you also here an exploded isometric view of how it works and i'm actually going to run quickly a short video here that shows you how this all fits together and how the different components now ideally you would like to form this kind of picture in your mind looking at this figuring out how does all of this work together okay this is a gear and sump assembly so right here at the bottom is the sump okay it's this part here we've got number 10 which is our plug we've got number eight which is our pin seven our color six color plate etc you're gonna have to identify all of these now how do i start this drawing you first gonna read your question in full because sometimes they actually catch you out here they're actually just asking a half sectional front view plus a top view and the top view is not, not sectioned there was one year where they actually just asked a full sectional front view and we had learners doing top views and right views and left views don't waste your time by doing things that's not asked make sure you read the question fully okay if we talk about a half sectional front view and the top view the layout is going to be similar exactly like it is here we have our half sectional front view and the top view and sorry it's this top view that must be drawn in symmetry okay then you're going to plan your drawings and look at some of these notes. They want to see all three faces of the M20 nut. They want to use conventional representation of the spur gear, etc. We look at the memo in a moment. Before we get to the memo, let's zoom in here a little bit. If you struggle with these drawings on how they fit together, here's my hack, okay? Let the measurements lead you. Okay, if you look here, we've got an M20 shaft here. We've got a spur gear which has a diameter 2 hole going through it. So that diameter 20 and this M20 already signals to you that they fit together. And you can see that it is conformed by, confirmed by the actual exploded view. Okay. Then the shaft goes into number 5 which, which is the bush. And you'll see here's the bush. Okay. And the inner diameter here is diameter 42 and its outer diameter here is also diameter 42. Another thing that is quite interesting here is if you look at the order of this exactly how they started it here they've got the nut then the washer then you've got your spur gear there it goes then you go into the shaft you see the order the bush is next then we're going to have um, our screws then again on top we have our color plate so you can see there's almost that they're leading you with the eye similarly to how they're doing it. So those are two things. Look at the layout and then the measurements let that lead you to understand where everything fits together. Let's look at the actual answer. Again, what did they give marks for? So I've really zoomed this out. There's the two views. You've got your sectional or symmetry, your symmetrical top view here. 
All right, this is of course much bigger than you're going to draw it, but just for the sake of you being able to see it, you've got your symmetrical top view here. We didn't do the full view because of the lines of symmetry, but the construction of this nut is going to be important because it's these points that you're going to be bringing down to get the width of the actual nut. Learners lose a lot of marks here because they do not do this construction correct, but you can see the amount of marks just in this part here. There is a video on the How to EGD channel, How to Draw Your Bolts and Nuts. Have a look at that if you're unsure, but they get this construction right. Okay, then you have your uh, half section coming down here. Make sure that this center line is not a solid line, okay? If you were taught that way, it's incorrect. It is not a solid line. It's a half section, and therefore, you have a center line going through. Look at your hatching here. Again, the details of the smaller components, all of these smaller details are given, and you can see where that marks. They actually do the extra trouble of when they're marking, giving us the memorandums, they're actually asking us and showing exactly where those marks are allocated. Quite a significant amount of marks just going in those little components. So don't neglect them. Make sure they are drawn accurately. Make sure, remember, you do not hatch any webs or fasteners not hatched. Um, all right, hatching correctly done. And then if there's any labels, you need to add them. Let's look at the year after that. Okay, this was last year's actual video. And you can see a lot of similarities here again. It's, you've got the exploded view. You've got the order in which they are put together. Um, and then let's, let's look at the actual drawings that was given. It's always going to be third angle orthographic. And in this case, they've given you front views and right views. Front view, right view. Front view, right view. Front view, right view. Front view, right view. All the way through. Let the measurements be the ones that lead you how you fit all of these together, okay? And then make sure you look at the example of how to represent a conventional bevel gear because these will be the kind of ways that you will have to draw these bevel gears. You'll never be asked to draw it in this much detail. They'll always give you the hint here. So don't neglect these kind of notes that is given. Okay, let's look at the memo. Right here, so here we are with the two views. I've printed it out a bit bigger than I should have, uh, but it gives you an idea of the layout. We've got our right view here and our half sectional front view. Okay, you can see the cutting plane running here. If we let this part fall, remember this is the right view. If this part falls away and I look at it from the front, that's going to be this top part. This bottom part here is, of course, this part. Look at your nut construction. This then is your actual, or your bolt construction. This is actually your auxiliary view to get this drawn correctly, to get these heights drawn correctly. Um, again, your half section division line is not a solid line. Make sure you get your partial sections correctly. Always remember, any center lines must be added. Okay, your conventional, your conventional representation of that bevel gear is done in this way um, with your center lines. That was actually given to you right here. Okay, that's a quick overview then of your questions that you can expect with your mechanical. It's important for you to practice these drawings, to draw them in preparation for your final exams. Thank you for watching. All the best with your final exams. I absolutely champion you. I want you to draw with confidence and the only way you're going to get that done is by drawing, drawing, drawing as many of these drawings as you can. Make sure you read through the description below, you download the two exams prior to this year and draw, draw, draw in preparing for your final exams. I trust you will absolutely smack it. Thank you for watching. Now it really is your turn. <laughs>